If it is we who have created this world, if society is an assemblage, then perhaps the mess we live in, from climate change, to debt crisis, to economic problems, to poverty, to war, to questions of race and exploitation and gender oppression, that all these things are consequences of human actions. One role then perhaps of the critical intellectual or scholar is to understand this, to understand that they, these are historic practices and therefore changeable. From 1974 to 1991, Ethiopia was completely shut, out, shut off from the world. You know, it was uh, under a military regime. But the last 20 years, um, you know, it has been trying to come out of that shackle, of that 17 years of closure. You see in the last five years, young people trying to understand their world, particularly in the university, in the academic circle. For me, it's a good place. It's not an easy place, but it's a good place to think about uh, how younger people, younger scholars, and not just scholars, also practitioners, are thinking about um, pressing human questions in the 21st century. Sometimes the most unlikely place, or the more unlikely place, is the better nursery for fruitful and innovative thinking. It is extremely important for those of us which are in the Global South you know, to try to give our inputs uh, in terms of what the, the human should look like. It's very valuable to uh, really inculcate non-Western humanity here because most of the problems in, in Africa, I think, uh, especially after independence, after colonialism, is uh, trying to impose European values into the African system. But that doesn't work. I think African intellectuals are realizing now that developing our own values, developing our own culture, of course, the European theory, the European mode of production, the European way of modernity is also important to know. But at the same time, that has to be uh, combined with what the African scenario is too. The only way for me to be able to pull out of this you know, poverty, underdevelopment is when we understand ourselves. And in order to understand who we are, we need to understand our languages, we need to understand our history, we need to understand our culture, and that's the only way we can really go forward and improve ourselves. Once we begin to think this way, then questions of what an archive look like, where can we go to begin to deal with some of these meanings, shifts dramatically shifts from archives being just a storage place in the library to questions of the body, to questions of what some people would call writ large culture and so on. In other words, opens up another field of study, both for social scientists and humanists, to begin to think about the questions of human meaning in the world that we as human beings have made. We have dwelt on certain kind of, if I would say, mainstream archives and in a way this shuns us from you know viewing or understanding humanity in a better manner we have been dwelling for instance on archives such as written scripts statues archaeological findings that have helped us very much to understand humanity but 
we have been explaining the lives of the elites, the lives of the warriors, the lives of the kings and the queens. What about the ordinary people? So to understand the ordinary people in a better way, we have to look into the archive of the ordinary. In a country like Ethiopia, where there are many uh, ethnic groups, many cultures, language, I mean, diverse life, it's hard even to talk about the Ethiopian women. You know, it's very hard. Currently, I've been undertaking a research in one of the subsidies of Addis Ababa. It's on women who make uh, local and alternative household energy, uh, which they call tf -tf. They call it tf -tf. So they make tf -tf out of charcoal residues and clay soil. They mix the two together and they bake it like bread. So they they lay it down on the surface so that the dry the sun dries out. So after it's dry, they use it for cooking and heating. They persist on making stuff because they have no alternative. They have to make use of their their available energy and source. So I believe that I have the responsibility. It's not just a personal uh, desire or a personal. Uh, choice but also maybe a political one because I have to make that difference. Maybe I'm not subjected to gender inequalities. I'm not subjected to any discrimination or any other uh, injustice. But my sisters, the society is facing it. The, the problem is prevalent. I see it. So I believe that I had the chance to make the difference. So I believe that it's making it visible, making it uh, available or bringing to the to light will make the, the desire and the need of these women visible. Music is very important for Ethiopian society and um, I believe it, it has a very high uh, resolution to capture uh, time, meaning, and uh, significance of uh, and value system of the people in a certain period that many people would just ignore or never give a thought about things we never find in the official history. It's not really enough to interview the generals or uh, people who, who were in, in kind of important places in quotation mark. I mean, stories from the military, the militia, and the farmers should come out from, uh, from the people. And we can build a narrative uh, from bottom-up fashion. When we think of the Ethiopian uh, revolution uh, uh, during the 1970s, uh, we, we cannot ignore arts role. Uh, many plays were staged in this theater, new kinds of plays which were calling for new kind of uh, life. These uh, people were part of the beginning of the change. And they used to invite uh, people from the provisional military government. The artists were telling these people to you know, go on the right track so that they could serve their people in a better way. So revolutionary ideas were sold, if you like, to the uh, military people. And that was why I called the Ethiopian National Theatre, a battleground for ideologies. Most of Ethiopian traditional songs are uh, very political, I guess, by nature. If you take the uh, funeral songs, uh, and if that man dies through some connections with the ruling or the higher uh, body, uh, you know, that's really the moment you can express your sorrow. You'll have the courage and nobody really can do something to you, you know, in that grief moment. People may just say it's a grief, but it will continue. And I can I can tell you a dozen of songs uh, made in the 19th century, even 18th century, uh, that a wife of the deceased uh, um, 
sings about the cruelty of the king for killing uh, her husband or her son. And it had also happened during the socialist period, just a few decades before. Uh, they sing and they cry and uh, it can air out. Some of them may not lead to an action and some of them are really in, you know, uh, pushing you to actions and even send you to war. And it's obvious even the current government, the e EPRDF, they wouldn't have made it to power if it was not for their music. The music has been very instrumental in for making actions uh, from both for the strong and for the weak. And because the state has never allowed, you know, you know, ideas, especially which are challenging, subversive ideas to be staged, whenever the state tried to impose these kinds of, you know, sanctions on the stage, artists have been, you know, negotiating with those kinds of power by using wax and gold. Wax and gold, it is like, you know, presenting a certain kind of meaning while it is painted with the wax, which is the super, the superficial, if you like, kind of meaning, while the real meaning, the intended meaning is something which, you know, lies beneath. So people have been using this as a safety valve to air their views. Democratia. Ndim lalem dimos katum yele kratos. Athena shole shindet or sonda mule shakatesh. Yad damelish taragatesh babarinet had fet fetesh. Kratos and Kadimos, Satam Machi, Satas Mami, his vessel Tanan Satalemi, Machina Barusa Wuchish, Anchati Nabariochish, his Anatu, Hewanuchish, Sultan Ferj, his Vetara, So Bamulla Saitara, his vessel Tanan and Demon Metarak Alunamat Shu, will let Kutbele Satulju, Chen Gavshin Lazarelem, Bedinishan Astak of Shu. I like the poetic side of wax and gold. But at the same time, it's a sign of hmm, bondage for me. If you're not living in a free society, then you have to resort to other kinds of options such as wax and gold. What if we have democratic kind of, you know, context so that we can, we can, you know, probe into new kinds of beginnings, new kinds of words, new kinds of lines. In systems where there is a drive to totality, an absolute totality, colonialism, racism, and fascism, that what is interesting is that it always attempts to make the human superfluous. This is the phrase is Anna Harens, not mine. And so this question of trying to work through the figure of the human, to make the human not superfluous, I think that is at the heart of this tradition. That is Fanon's challenge, I think, to us, and the end of the conclusion of Wretched of the Earth. And if you ask me, that is the challenge that the African and African diaspora critical tradition poses. Just what is he uh, thinking at when he's saying, let us 
look to a new direction because the way the way I see it, if we were to look for that direction now, uh, it's kind of too late or like we've we've missed the chance to do that. But we are at like four or five centuries ago, and we were to combine our muscles and our brains, uh, we would come up with a, a civilization that is in complete contrast to the civilization of the world that we have now. He's, I believe that he's trying to make us like you know open our eyes in 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 having our own realities, you know, in having our own say in things, you know, in our own land. So when you say that like, it's too late for us, what is it that you mean in that like? He talks about a new frame that we need to follow a new model, but we are obviously following and a European model right now. You were saying the other day how even China is following the European model of development. So uh, we, we are already on our way, on our progressing in that model. So where, where is that? If that new direction was going to happen, it must have hap should have happened a few centuries ago. In the next uh, paragraph, he says, if we wish to live up to our people's expectations, we must seek the response elsewhere than in Europe. So where is this elsewhere that he's talking about? Or is, does this look like it's in somehow contradiction with what he's saying in that invention and, and discovery? I feel like he's trying to make us make our own reality, you know, our own thing within that African concept of, you know, being, not in uh, trying to have another model. We cannot, because he talks about how the American, the United States has become a second Europe, and he's, he, he says that, let's, please let's not have a third Europe in Africa or in the third world, you know? So what I think he's trying to tell us, let us make our own history, our own reality within, you know? Within While us. I like this whole man, this, you know, this man who is freed from bondage and has completely materialized his humanity, he doesn't exist in a vacuum, he does need a setting or a circumstance in which to, to survive and to exist. And this, in, in this circumstance or this setting, I think, is part of a system which, in which, which is, of course, the frame that we have copied from Europe, the frame of, uh, of, of, of organizing ourselves as societies, as developing and producing and all that. So I, I, don't, I don't know how they can exist separately. The BRA project has allowed them to have a certain kind of critical edge in trying to think about what needs to happen in their own space, um, not just in Addis Ababa University, but also, quite frankly, in Africa itself. How we grasp, therefore, these possibilities will shape our own futures. It will seem to me that we, as a human species, are moving in a direction where we have to confront the world that we have created and to act to change that world. To do that requires that we move beyond, I would argue, a science of man, to a kind of worldly hermeneutics of the human, to grapple with the meaning of the world that we have created in order to create the conditions for new meanings and for a more humane forms of life on this planet. <laughs>